Hello everyone, in our series of Dogplexus KOL interviews, we have with us Dr. Matthew Samuel, who is a Tulia pioneer in the field of angioplasty in India and is currently associated with Apollo Hospital, Chennai. As a founder chairman of National Angioplasty Registry in India, Dr. Matthew has conducted coronary angioplasty programs in most of the prominent hospitals in the country. He is the first Indian cardiologist to start various techniques like angioplasty with percutaneous bypass, coronary stunting, carotid stunting and rotabular arthrectomy to name a few. Among the various current academic positions, he is the Director International Cardiology and Cardiac Catheterization Laboratories, Apollo Hospitals, Chennai. He has received many awards including the Padma Shri and Dr. B.C. Roy National Award in recognition of his services in the development of speciality of cardiology. Sir, it is an honor for us to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you for having me for your duplex. Sir, recently you were invited to deliver the Tamai Medical Lecture in Kobe, Japan. So, you have an extensive experience in Southeast Asia region. So, where does India stand in with regard to angioplasty when compared to the rest of the world? And what are the steps to improve further in this direction? Um, I think it would be more appropriate that if I explain a little more about the Tamai Memorial Lecture. There is a course conducted every year out of Japan. It's called the CCT, Complex Coronary Therapeutics. This is one of the world's largest audience, one of the most respected uh, meeting in coronary interventions in the whole, whole world. It is not limited to Asia Pacific, it is not limited to this region at all, it is worldwide. We get uh, participants uh, as faculty as well as uh, uh, attendees from all over the world, almost 4,000 doctors. Every year there is a premier event or the most important event of the meeting is the Tamai Memorial Lecture. Tamai is, uh, was one of the founder members of CCT who introduced this program and he is no more with us since his death four years back. They have this lecture every year. It was a great honor for India as one of us got invited to deliver this most important lecture of the year. This is uh, indirectly a uh, way of recognizing the leaders for in that particular field for their contribution for last so many years they worked. They look at the academic accomplishments, they look at uh, the pursuit of teaching, training the next generation and the committee forms of 20 eminent cardiologists who select from their list uh, and finally nominate one person to deliver the lecture. That's what happened. It was a pri proud moment for us uh, as Indians and for me especially personally to deliver this lecture. This uh, again re-emphasize the second part of your question. Uh, what are our standing internationally Indian cardiologists? It now is well proven that we are ahead of many other countries and our academic accomplishments and teaching programs have attracted uh, a standing ovation at various meetings. Uh, so academically and as far as angioplasty is concerned, India is one of the top countries in the whole world. Certainly, it's a proud moment for all of us. So, it is estimated that almost 80% of the cases undergo uh, undergoing balloon angioplasty have stunting done as well. So, in which cases would you recommend a balloon angioplasty alone, given the chance that the reoccurrence of atherosclerosis would be high? And what would be the most preferred form of angioplasty and what factors do you take into consideration? I think uh, the, your audience is uh, going to be primarily only doctors and especially invited doctors. So let us make some issues very clear. Balloon angioplasty has unfortunately attracted a 
bad comment that this is temporary and bypass surgery is permanent. Let us clarify that both procedures are palliative, both procedures, surgery and angioplasty are complementary. Our purpose is solely to give a good quality life back to the patients who has other problems. Of course, there is a mortality benefit also. Now, angioplasty came into being in 1977 only because bypass graft also start developing problems which we know, all of us know that uh, almost uh, 20 to 30 percent of uh, bypass venous grafts develop uh, occlusion in a very short time. And mammary artery of course has got a better longevity and a better long term result. So when a palliation is the only choice of treatment, then why not make that choice a little more, uh, less traumatic, less uh, cumbersome for the patient. And if we can qualitatively deliver the same purpose by doing an angioplasty, why not? That is the whole thought process we went into development of angioplasty. We know that plain balloon angioplasty had around 30% chance of recurrence. We wanted to fight that. That's how the stenting came into existence. Stenting reduced the chance of emergency surgeries and a better long-term result. Was, but we were still having the problem of recurrence or restenosis. We were not happy with that. Next came the development of uh, 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 the drug eluding stents where we are able to improve the result from 25 to 30 percent recurrence to less than 10 percent recurrence. So this is a remarkable achievement. So qualitatively we are equal or sometimes better than that of surgery. And no more we do only plain balloon angioplasty except in cases where the vessels are too small or in an acute emergency during um, heart attacks that the myocardial infarction where there is a lot of clots, we don't intend to put a stent, yes. Otherwise, angioplasty today lands up 90%, 95% with a stent, which is uh, the best choice because that gives us a better acute result and a better long-term result. So, that is where we stand as far as the stenting is concerned. There are other modalities of treatment like atherectomy or I mean, different ways of etherectomy, laser treatment, rod ablation, other, other things. These are all uh, subsets where uh, angioplasty with the stent alone is not enough. We need to uh, prepare the lesion, better way to deliver the stent, yes. Then we get into all those technology techniques also. So, sir, are there patients who have undergone a prior percutaneous transluminal coronary angioplasty and developed restosinosis of the vessels, good candidates for rotablation therapy and are there any special precautions that need to be taken in these cases? Um, of course, as I mentioned earlier, uh, some of the angioplasty patients, luckily a um, small percentage, uh, in smaller numbers need to go for uh, bypass surgery after an angioplasty. But there is a need to go for a bypass surgery in some of those patients, yes. But there is no technical disadvantage them going for uh, bypass surgery after angioplasty if that need arises. Luckily that percentage is only 10 to 12 percent. What we have done over the last five, six years, we have compared the result of angioplasty versus bypass surgery in multivessel disease, left main coronary arteries and followed them up with, a, this is a randomized uh, study, over 4,000 patients, they take the lots and go for each procedure and followed them up for five years to see whether both procedures, which is better for what. Uh, luckily, angioplasty has proven itself to be an excellent option uh, today available even with multivessel disease or left main coronary artery disease. Because you ask me whether they have any disadvantage going in for a bypass surgery in angioplasty, I think it's uh, appropriate that I tell that 
<coughs> many of our patients today, what we treat, at least 30% of my patients, have had a bypass surgery prior to angioplasty. And uh, they benefit tremendously with angioplasty. We are able to open the old native artery which was bypassed earlier or we are able to even open the bypass grafts with angioplasty. So this has revolutionized the entire procedure and the longevity of a patient. Less traumatic and uh, remarkable uh, comparative result and I think uh, uh, angioplasty is here to stay and which is very very we surgeons and cardiologists are supportive of each other. We know both procedures are complementary. Definitely, sir. What has been your experience with bioreabsorbable stents and in what proportion of patients requiring angioplasty are these stents currently being used? And do you believe that these will gradually replace the bare metal and drug eluting stents? Okay. Um, biodegradable stent is when we put in a stent, it's a metallic device. That is a permanent implant, we are not going to take it out. We are looking at an option of just like what we do for a, a fracture uh, of the uh, bone, where we can fix a rod, once the bone healing completes, we can remove it and we are going back to the same. We, there are several concerns of leaving the metal uh, device inside that can be a hindrance for a, a future surgery if it is needed in some cases or people don't like to have a metal device or that can attract a clot in very small subset of patients 0.5 percent if that all can be avoided and a metal device inside the coronary arteries where, which is a mobile uh, functioning systole diastole movement the stents can be a hindrance for the vessel movement. If we have a stent which can disappear and get the vessel back to a normal self, that would be the best option. That's what the purpose of starting this uh, bioreabsorbable stent. It is uh, made out of a plastic. When it degrades, it degrades into carbon dioxide and water. Dr. Tamai was, uh, now that uh, it's appropriate to mention that, was the first cardiologist in the whole world thought about this process and he made the first stent in the world, in the absorbable stent. So, today absorbable stent um, has uh, come into existence last four years. The results are good, but there are limitations by way of the thickness of the stent by way of uh, the reabsorption, we thought it will end in uh, less than a year's time. Now we realize that it takes more than two years. Then the polymer where the drug is attached to this plastic has given us some heartaches and headaches uh, related to stent thrombosis. These all are, uh, this is improving every day. Now the newer generation of the stents are much thinner, closer to the metallic stent and which disappears in eight to nine months. All that is happening. The technology is definitely improving and long term possibly there would be better stents, better long term result, better for the patients. So, Dr. Matthew, if your patient has um, undergone with multiple stunts in the past, does the surgical risk in the coronary artery bypass graft procedure increase and does this play an important role in selecting the patient for PCI? Technically, no, because uh, uh, no end is, I would say. If we have put a stent all over that artery and the patient unfortunately needs a bypass surgery, then there is no place for a uh, graph to be put that is uh, if it is all the metal jacket is there that we generally don't do it we leave some space if uh, god forbid he needs a surgery a space for a graft but there are some sub subset of patients who may need long stents and uh, metal jackets in that patient a biodegradable stent would be a remarkable achievement to get him like Though expensive, it is going to change the outcome because you are getting the normal vessel back. Otherwise, there is some disadvantage in those small subset of patients. 
95% of the patients there is no limitations undergoing bypass surgery after angioplasty just like no limitations of patients undergoing angioplasty after bypass surgery so what are your thoughts on carotid artery stenting as opposed to a carotid endrectomy in cases of uh, atherosclerotic carotid uh, stenosis and are there any complications associated with that let me start from the uh, later part of the question what are the complications of uh, um, carotid angioplasty which is very very popular this way very less very limited complication yes some small emboli can go into the brain and produce a small uh, focal deficit or problems related to that some paralysis in rarely 0.01% 02% uh, this because we are able to catch most of those uh, uh, particles we can place a basket beyond the area we are treating and collect all those particles and retrieve it after angioplasty so the technology has helped us to reduce the complications dramatically now compared to endarterectomy what is the benefits in angioplasty of course there is tremendous benefit the limitations of uh, carotid endarterectomy is uh, again as i said they don't have the advantage of keeping a basket when they do the surgery uh, during endarterectomy also small particles can get dislodged and go and embolize and create problems that is one second is endarterectomy uh, is in carotids are better than that of uh, other vessels because it's a large vessel uh, compared to endarterectomy the complication rates and uh, more morbidity uh, after procedure with angioplasty is far far uh, technically less so there is everything to gain by an uh, carotid angioplasty when compared to that of surgery so in this time when knowledge in this medical space is exponentially increasing how do you think a platform like docplexus can help in updating the medical fraternity and what would be your advice to budding interventional cardiologists i was very impressed when i heard the functioning of the docplexus i understand that you are more than a lakh or lakh and a half doctors enrolled who are utilizing the services of you to enhance the knowledge you uh, are passing on a lot of information to this people who otherwise have got a, some limitations in accessing the information you are able to provide for example an interview with people like us who have uh, put uh, uh, decades of work and uh, commitment into a particular field and we are able to share our knowledge with uh, the doctors uh, and they can interact with us through you and clarify their issues they can discuss cases with us or other experts it's a tremendous advantage and uh, i'm uh, really amazed uh, how you thought of this idea and putting it into practice and uh, Uh, i'm impressed i think i hope more people do uh, good work like you do <laughs> definitely sir the aim is to empower doctors oh, great anyway thank you so much for the uh, interview and having me over and uh, i enjoyed speaking to you all and uh, answering the question i hope i've been very clear if any of your uh, audience wants to clarify any of the issues which i touched upon they can always write back to me through you by email i will certainly try to answer but uh, not immediately i'll try find squeeze in definitely sir i'm sure all the people who listen to this interview will definitely benefit from it and thank you so much for sharing your valuable time with oh, us oh thank you thank you and good evening to stay updated on our latest scale videos and interviews please follow us on twitter like us on our facebook page and subscribe on our youtube channel happy dog flexing